on World News Tonight. Israel bombarded. Hamas launches a barrage of missiles into northern Israel on Shabbat day. Unlikely partnership. France and China join hands on preventing nuclear escalations in Ukraine. Fallout fears. Japan prepares to release treated wastewater from the Fukushima power plant prompting warnings from the public. Passion of the Christ. Guatemalans commemorate the Stations of the Cross in a lavish display. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are watching World News where we bring to you up to date with the latest updates from around the planet. To add to the atrocities committed towards Israel, missiles were launched from both the Gaza Strip and Lebanon towards northern Israel, out of which many were deflected by Israel's Iron Dome. Israel launched airstrikes in the Gaza Strip overnight, hitting a series of sites belonging to the Hamas terror group in retaliation for a barrage of rockets from the Palestinian enclave as well as from Lebanon, attacks Israel blames on Hamas. In early hours of Friday morning, Israel also staged strikes in Lebanon targeting terrorist infrastructures belonging to Hamas in the southern part of the country. Hamas has a strong presence in southern Lebanon's Palestinian refugee camps. The Israel Defense Force said in a statement Friday that Israel, quote, will not allow the Hamas terrorist organization to operate from within Lebanon and holds the state of Lebanon responsible for every directed fire emanating from its territory. In response to the strikes, Palestinian terrorists launched more rockets at southern Israel on Friday morning, prompting fresh Israeli airstrikes. In the second round of strikes on Friday morning, fighter jets took out a shaft from an underground weapons production site, three other sites for weapons manufacturing, a tunnel and a series of observation posts all belonging to Hamas. Further, dozens of rockets were fired from southern Lebanon with several intercepted by the Iron Dome air defense system over northern Israel. At least three people were injured. Israeli officials said 34 rockets had been fired towards the border with five landing inside Israel, four with unknown impact sites and the rest downed by Iron Dome. Another two rockets were launched later in the evening towards the northern town of Methula without causing any damage or injuries. Such a massive barrage would make this the largest number of rockets fired from Lebanon since 2006 war, during which thousands of rockets were launched at Israel. In August 2021, Hezbollah fired 19 rockets at northern Israel. The attack on Israel was in response to the raid in Jerusalem. Israeli police have raided Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque for a second time in 24 hours as tensions rise in Israel and occupied Palestinian territories. Rocks met with rubber bullets and stun grenades as clashes broke out a second time at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The confrontations come just hours after the arrest of more than 300 people in a police raid at the compound, after dozens of worshippers brought rocks and firecrackers into the mosque and attempted to barricade themselves inside. The managers of the complex say Israeli police opted for violent force to evacuate worshippers, but the police say their officers' actions were justified. Tonight, as police worked to allow large numbers of Muslims to celebrate the month of Ramadan, several young outlaws and masked agitators brought fireworks, sticks and stones into the mosque. After many long and unsuccessful attempts to remove them through dialogue, the police were forced to dislodge them in order to allow the first dawn prayers to take place and to prevent violent disturbances. The incident has received international condemnation from both Egypt and Saudi Arabia, the latter saying that it undermines peace efforts in the region. The clashes prompted several rockets to be fired from the north of the Gaza Strip towards Israeli territory. French President Emmanuel Macron says he is counting on Chinese leader Xi Jinping to bring Russia to its senses. Both leaders are on the same page over preventing the use of nuclear weapons in the conflict in Ukraine. French President Emmanuel Macron and Chinese President Xi Jinping agree that the war in Ukraine should come to an end soon and nuclear weapons must be avoided at all times. This as the two met on Thursday in Beijing, with Macron arriving in the Chinese capital with a push for peace as one of his top agendas. France shares the will to make sure that nuclear power is excluded from this conflict. International treaties should be respected. In no way can nuclear weapons be deployed outside of endowed states, especially in Europe. We urge all parties to fulfill the solemn promise that nuclear weapons will not be used and nuclear war will not be fought. 
Oppose the use of biological and chemical weapons under any circumstances. Oppose the armed attack on civilian nuclear facilities such as nuclear power plants. We start peace talks as soon as possible. Macron also urged Xi to play a bigger role in mediating between Ukraine and Russia, saying he could count on Xi to bring back Russia to reason and get everyone to the negotiating table. Also during the day, EU Commissioner Ursula von der Leyen joined the two to form a trilateral meeting. There, she also reiterated China's willingness to play a part in forming peace between Ukraine and Russia. Um, I know from my phone calls that um, and President Zelensky asked for it publicly. So it was interesting uh, to hear that um, President Xi reiterated his willingness to speak when conditions and time are right. I think this is a positive element. Trade was also a major topic with the EU claiming that European companies are not operating on a level playing field in China. Van der Leyen said decoupling from China is neither viable nor desirable from the perspective of maintaining good relations between China and the EU. Macron also made efforts to expand ties. Traveling with him to China were 50 French business leaders, including those from airplane producer Airbus and French luxury brand LVMH. Saudi Arabia and Iran taking another step towards reconciliation. The nation's foreign ministers announced an agreement to resume diplomatic ties and reopen embassies and consulates. China has been mediating the talks in hopes of ending the seven year of tension. In Beijing, a historic handshake between rivals as the foreign ministers of Iran and Saudi Arabia meet for the first time in seven years. It was a photo op for China as well, eager to show itself as the broker of peace and challenging the United States' role as the main outside power broker in the Middle East. China welcomes and appreciates the continuous improvement of the relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. We will continue to contribute to Chinese wisdom to the security, stability and development of the Middle East. Saudi Arabia cut ties with Iran in 2016 after an attack on the Saudi embassy in Tehran, an act of revenge by the Iranians following the execution of a Shiite dignitary in Riyadh. The hostility between the two nations has fueled conflicts across the Middle East, including Yemen, where the two rival powers have waged a proxy war and where tens of thousands of people have been killed and millions are on the brink of starvation. But in March, after a series of meetings mediated by Beijing, the two countries surprised the world, announcing they would restore diplomatic relations. After the foreign ministers met on Thursday, they released a joint statement laying out plans to reopen embassies and consulates within two months and plans to resume flights and facilitate visas for the other citizens. Their talks are expected to be followed by a visit by Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi to Riyadh after Ramadan at the end of the month. Japan is planning to release more than a million tons of treated but still radioactive wastewater from its destroyed Fukushima nuclear power plant this year. The International Atomic Energy Agency has been inspecting Japan's monitoring system. The IAEA says Japan's Fukushima wastewater monitoring system is largely reliable, but it has expressed some lingering concerns. As part of its ongoing safety review of the wastewater from the nuclear plant that was damaged in 2011 earthquake, the agency released its midterm report on Wednesday. And the agency confirmed that TEPCO, the operator of the plant, is taking comprehensive and realistic programs to monitor the safety of the soon-to-be-discharged wastewater. It added that TEPCO has made significant progress after taking into account the agency's previous feedback, which is in line with international safety standards. However, the report pointed to improvements to be made. Regarding TEPCO's environmental impact assessment, the IAEA called for further explanation as to why the consumption of seafood caught at the location three kilometers north from the site is excluded, noting the concentrations in seafood are likely to be higher there. Also against TEPCO's revised measure of radioactive contamination, the agency called for further information on the radiological impact of two radionuclides, C-14 and I-129, and their impact on the environment. 
All of these are based on TEPCO's updated methods and programs assessed before the IAEA's second visit in November 2022. Any revisions made after that will be assessed later and will be published in following reports. The agency is aiming to release the finalized report before Japan's planned release of the wastewater later this year. We'll be back with more world news after the short commercial break. Welcome back. The White House released a report about the decisions regarding the 2021 U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, including the bombing at the Kabul airport that killed 13 U.S. service members. The White House on Thursday released a summary of the after-action reports on the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, laying part of the blame on President Joe Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump. President Biden inherited a forced presence in Afghanistan of some 2,500 troops. That was the lowest since 2001. He inherited a special immigrant visa program that had been starved of resources. And he inherited a deal struck between the previous administration and the Taliban that called for the complete removal of all U.S. troops by May of 2021, or else the Taliban, which had stopped its attacks while the deal was in place, would go back to war against the United States. White House National Security spokesman John Kirby told reporters at a press briefing Thursday that Biden was left with a stark choice, withdraw all U.S. forces or resume fighting with the Taliban. The report points to deliberate degradation by the Trump administration, an accusation that Kirby said refers to the drawdown of U.S. troops during Trump's time in office, the release of thousands of Taliban prisoners, the negotiation of the Doha agreement to end the war without the local government, and the virtual freezing of an Afghan visa program. Kirby said the Trump administration was not forthcoming when asked for withdrawal plans, affording little in the way of transition between the administrations. The Taliban overran Afghanistan in August 2021, as the former Western-backed government in Kabul quickly collapsed and the last U.S. troops withdrew. No agency predicted a Taliban takeover in nine days. No agency predicted the rapid fleeing of President Ghani, who had indicated uh, to us his intent to remain in Afghanistan up until he departed on the 15th of August. And no agency predicted that, more th that the more than 300,000 trained and equipped Afghan National Security and Defense Forces would fail to fight for their country, especially after 20 years of American support. Thirteen U.S. service members were killed by a suicide bomber at Kabul's airport during the evacuation. The 12-page document acknowledged that the administration learned lessons from the withdrawal and now errs on the side of aggressive communication about risks in a destabilized security environment. But Kirby said leaving the country was ultimately the right choice. America is on a stronger strategic footing, more capable to support Ukraine and to meet our security commitments around the world, as well as the competition with China, because it is not fighting a ground war in Afghanistan. European aviation is gearing up for Easter travel disruptions marked by strikes and cancellations in a major test of the industry's ability to prevent a repeat of last year's summer holiday season chaos. European aviation is gearing up for potential Easter travel disruption brought on by strikes and cancellations. The warnings from airlines and airports show aviation is still vulnerable to external pressures. That's despite efforts to avoid a repeat of last year's chaotic queues and cancellations seen during the summer holiday season. Airlines have spent months trying to deal with labour shortages through better coordination and staffing up. Any disruption is unlikely to end a debate over the European Union's strict passenger compensation rules. Airlines say they have to pay remuneration without themselves getting compensated for air traffic delays. But consumer groups argue air traffic control strikes are not new. They believe airlines should be quicker to react and pay compensation. European lobby group the European Consumer Organization say consumer prepayments for air tickets should be phased out, especially in times of disruption. They argue airlines often spend that money quickly and leave consumers struggling for months to get their money back. The current strikes have coincided with a recovery in travel demand. 
Departures from Britain during the Easter weekend are due to go up 11% compared with last year, though still lower than before the health crisis. France is particularly hard hit with ongoing strikes against Emmanuel Macron's controversial pension reform. Airlines and airports were criticised in the media and parliaments for their handling of last year's air travel surge, but they say there is little they can do when it comes to Europe's growing industrial unrest. Former Tesla employees say intimate photos and videos of owners taken by the electric vehicle's built-in camera were widely shared among workers despite the company's privacy protection claims and claims that add to mounting controversy over Tesla's various high-tech features. Their special report has found that employees of Tesla, the largest electric vehicle maker in the world, privately shared sometimes highly invasive videos and images recorded by the car's cameras. That's according to interviews with nine former employees. Tesla assures its millions of customers that their privacy is enormously important, noting on its website that the built-in cameras that assist with driving are designed to, quote, protect your privacy. But images shared over a private internal messaging system from 2019 to 2022 included sometimes embarrassing situations, such as a man approaching a vehicle naked, according to one former employee. That ex-employee added, quote, I'm bothered by it because the people who buy the car, I don't think they know that their privacy is like not respected. We could see them doing laundry and really intimate things. We could see their kids. Crashes and road rage incidents were also viewed, including one of a Tesla hitting a child riding a bike, according to an ex-employee. One former staffer saw nothing wrong with sharing the images, but said a function that allowed the company to view the location of recordings on Google Maps was a, quote, massive invasion of privacy, one that could potentially reveal where a Tesla owner lived. Wasn't able to obtain any of the shared videos or images, which ex-employees said they had not kept. Also wasn't able to determine if the practice of sharing recordings, which occurred within some parts of Tesla as recently as last year, continues today or how widespread it was. Some former employees contacted said the only sharing they observed was for legitimate work purposes, such as seeking assistance from colleagues or supervisors. To develop self-driving car technology, Tesla collects a vast trove of data from its global fleet of several million vehicles. The company requires car owners to grant permission on the car's touch screens before Tesla collects their vehicle's data. In its customer privacy notice, Tesla explains that the data may include short video clips or images, but isn't linked to a customer's account or vehicle identification number and, quote, does not identify you personally. Tesla did not respond to detailed questions sent to the company for the report. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. A Utah ski resort was put under lockdown after an avalanche spilled onto one of its beginner ski slopes. A statement confirmed that no one was injured or buried in the incident. A whale passed away after beaching on the shores of Bali despite being rescued by authorities the day before. Bali officials said that the whale was one of the three that had died in Bali in the past month. At least two people have died and more than a million more without power after an ice storm hit Canada's two most populated provinces, Quebec and Ontario, ahead of a holiday weekend bringing freezing rain and strong winds that topple trees and weighing down power lines. Former Taiwan President Ma Ying-jeou said at the end of a landmark visit to China that tensions with China has escalated under Taiwan's government and the island will have to choose between peace or war in the future. Grammy-winning rapper Coolio died from a fentanyl overdose, his manager said six months after the musicians was found dead at a friend's home in Los Angeles at age 59. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We end tonight with the Catholic faithful carrying large platforms bearing the figure of Jesus through the streets of the colonial city Antigua in Guatemala on Good Friday for a procession to mark the Passion of Christ. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your night.